Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba, and today I'm going to show you some more of my fantastic uh, 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 Vintage Scuba posters. That's right, these are movie posters. I have a big collection, oh, probably a couple hundred movie posters, and I thought I'd share some more of these. As we did with our last Vintage Movie Poster video, take a look back, you'll find it there. I talked about how Vintage Movie Posters were one of the contributors, the posters themselves, and the movie, of course, were one of the contributors to the idea that scuba diving is dangerous, that only people who are suicidal risk takers <laughs> would even consider becoming scuba divers. Now, we know that's not true today. Um, uh, I knew that when I was 10 years old, uh, but, <laughs> but my mom and dad didn't. But anyway, uh, back then in the 50s and 60s, you see, if you were a scuba diver, you know, it was like taking your life in your hands every time you went underwater because, as I've mentioned before, uh, every, in every movie, uh, a scuba diver went underwater. He was attacked by some vicious underwater creature or he was trapped in a shipwreck or he uh, blew his lungs up, you know, and none of those things happen. You know, we don't get attacked and, uh, and we don't get trapped in shipwrecks and our lungs don't blow up. And then the, the, the other thing that, that in most of these movies had, of course, was a beautiful woman. And let me tell you from experience, uh, that's not true either. <laughs> you don't meet a beautiful woman on every scuba dive. Uh, some. But anyway, uh, so movie posters. Now here's one that's pretty neat. This particular poster called Frogmen is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is from the 50s. The exact date is on there somewhere. And, uh, and, and this is a military type. I have quite a few that are basically movies based on military underwater operations. So Frogman and UDT, underwater demolition teams, things like that. Um, usually related to the Second World War because that's the first time they really became popular. Uh, and, and this is going to be interesting for another reason. This movie, Frogmen, inspired a series of comics, comic books. Yes, just as Sea Hunt did. The television series Sea Hunt was so popular. Uh, if, you, if you've seen my Sea Hunt playlist, you'll know that the TV series Sea Hunt, responsible for millions of divers getting into the sport, also uh, s spurned a, 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 a comic book series, 13, 13 comic books here in the U.S. and many more worldwide. And it's kind of neat because it, it stars as well some people you know, Richard Widmark. You may not remember that, but if you see a picture of Richard Widmark, then you would recognize him almost instantly. He was a very, very well-known character actor for many, many years from the 40s right up to the 70s or 80s. And uh, it has all the usual stuff. Um, Navy divers. You can see the Navy divers in the dark suits. And then there's some other divers just in bathing suits and they have weird equipment on, ray breathers and fancy stuff. They always have, of course, a long, 14-inch long, curved, sharp knife which is totally impractical. They didn't actually use a knife like that, but it sure looks good in the movies. And they're fighting each other, and all the usual stuff is in there. It's pretty neat. There's no picture of a beautiful woman on here because this particular lobby card, that's what this is called, didn't have a picture of her. Her name was Dana Andrews in this uh, particular movie. But there you go. There's an old movie poster. It's a lobby card, which means that this was placed when you, after you went into the theater, as you then went down the hallway to your, to your theater, to your seat, there would be display cases and there'd be lobby cards, different ones. Sometimes there was a series of six or a series of 13 if it was a very big movie. Uh, as opposed to a movie poster, the posters were outside. They were the big, big posters that were in the outside display cases facing the street. So as you walked along the street or drove by in your car, you could see this big movie poster uh, advertising Frogmen. And those big movie posters were called uh, half sheets or full sheets and quarter sheets depending on the size. Maybe some of you memorabilia or movie poster experts can share more details on that for me. Here's another one. This is pretty neat. Below the sea. Now this is everything. Everything that I've talked about. So there's a hard hat diver in there and the hard hat diver is using his his oxyacetylene torch, his blow torch, to try to stop this monster back here who has trapped the diver in his tentacles. And I don't see his knife, but I'm sure he has one. There's a beautiful woman over here looking through the porthole of some type of underwater uh, device. This particular lady, by the way, I don't know how accurate that photograph, this picture here is, but the particular lady who started in this show was Faye Ray. Faye Ray. Now, anyone who's my age will recognize that. Faye Ray was famous famous actor, but she became particularly famous for one role that she played. She played 
uh, opposite a very, very famous, very large, black, hairy creature called King Kong. That's right, yeah, the original King Kong. And you remember, as, as, as you know, uh, King Kong was a, was a menace, was a terror, and, and until he saw a beautiful woman. And he actually kidnapped her and carried her in, 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 in his great big paw. Like, his paw was like this, and Faye Ray was like this in his paw. Carried her to the top of the Empire State Building. And, and this is a long time ago, so the special effects are pretty interesting. Anyway, that was Faye Ray. That's where she became famous. And uh, who else was in this one? Ralph Bellamy, another famous character actor. If you check Ralph Bellamy, you'll probably recognize his picture as well. But there you go, another old movie poster from, I think it's the 50s, this particular one. You can see the information down there below. Great, that one. Now here's a, here's a neat one as well. Swashbuckling Sea Thrills. That's right, Swashbuckling Sea Thrill. This was called the Sea Hound. And this particular uh, little poster, does it show divers? No, this one doesn't actually show divers, but there is, oh yeah, there's some hard hat divers over here, so it does show some divers, and it's got all, it has everything. Shipwrecks, people fighting, long knives, dangerous creatures, and a beautiful girl. Everything is in here, and I wanted to show you this particular one, because again, it, it has an actor in it who is particularly well known. Let me get this straight, Buster Crab. Buster Crab. Again, if you're close to my age, you remember Buster Crab. Buster Crab was famous. Uh, Buster Crab was um, Tarzan. He played Tarzan in one of the many, many Tarzan movies. He also uh, played Flash Gordon. <laughs> yeah. So if you're my age or older, if you remember Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon was a very early spaceman. Yeah, long before, you know, Star Trek was not the first space. TV program, a television program, trust me. Uh, but he played that way. He was a very well known. And uh, the lady in this uh, picture is uh, Pamela Blake. Pamela Blake. So there we go. Swashbuckling sea thrills. Buster Crab in the Sea Hound. Another beautiful. And here's now here's one. This particular movie caused quite a stir when it came out. This was a really uh, a, a famous uh, m a movie, and uh, and uh, caused quite a stir. It was a it was a horror movie to some extent, some extent. And this lobby card is from that. This movie was called Ghost Diver, and and it tells it it basically tells a story about. Uh, uh, danger that people uh, entered into when they went into certain waters because in certain waters was this is ghost diver. Now the ghost diver, you can see it over here in white. The ghost diver was a hard hat diver, but he appeared and disappeared and caused problems and killed people and various things throughout the movie. And uh, the beautiful lady in here, uh, Audrey Totter, uh, you can see her there with her long knife. It's a long, scary looking knife. Not really a dive knife, but you know, it's Hollywood, right? And she's very beautiful, and ghost divers in there, and there's a hard hat diver up there. Death watches, death watchers of the forbidden domain. Okay, that's cool. And uh, so that's another beautiful one. All these from the 50s, these are old ones. Now, I have some larger posters as well, some real posters that we're going to look at. Give me just a minute to get that set up. I hope you enjoyed those lobby cards. And uh, let's take a look at some larger movie posters. Okay, be right back. Wake of the Red Witch. What do I know? Wake of the Red Witch, okay? And, um, and maybe that was a ship's name. I, I've not seen this one, Kevin. Have you seen it? No. And uh, it was based on a book that sold a million copies. And this is a kind of a neat one because of uh, the fact that uh, John Wayne, uh, you all know John Wayne, even though he's an old, old actor and been gone a long time, John Wayne is in it. Gail Russell is a pretty girl. Remember, I've told you that you have to have a diver, you have to have danger, and you have to have a pretty girl. Three requirements for uh, for uh, any poster. Uh, by the way, Kevin, I'm just thinking in my mind as I'm talking here, that's all the requirements for anything to do with underwater. Sea Hunt. Yeah. Perfect example. Yeah. Diana, my dear wife, and I have just been watching the episodes of Sea Hunt, again, going through them for various reasons, and 90% uh, of them have a good-looking girl in it. Yeah. Which, incidentally enough, happens to be attracted to Mike Nelson. I don't know how that works. Anyway, so there you go. So you got John Wayne and a pretty girl, a rake of the red witch. Oh, there's the book right there by Garland something, Rourke. And uh, Garland Rourke's famous sea story. There's a beautiful movie. Oh, there's the octopus, the danger. And he's got his knife out. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. It wouldn't be a good movie if he got eaten by an octopus. There you go. There's another. Now, this movie poster is special to me, personally, for several reasons. First of all, it's a great movie. I have seen this movie. It's a great movie. Uh, secondly, uh, 1948. Yeah, very good year. I was very close to the year I was born. 
And uh, number three, light bridges. Um, star of Sea Hunt, Mike Nelson, of course, uh, was a big actor. Uh, you folks have no idea how popular Lloyd Bridges was. Google him sometime. But Lloyd Bridges is in this movie as well. Other people as well. Juan Chaney, you may not know that name, but he was also a big character actor for many, many years. So for several reasons, this uh, movie is special uh, to me. Uh, but uh, as a movie poster, what's it got? All right. It's got divers. Right. Okay. It's got danger. Uh, he's got a real problem because uh, there's a, a fairly big shark. Yeah, and coming at him. Um, and, and thirdly, it's got that uh, ever, uh, ever necessary attractive girl in there. So, 16 fathoms deep. Did they ever know how to make pictures attractive, uh, posters attractive? They are, they're nice today, but they're usually photographs. They're actually true photographs. This was art. Yeah, they hired an artist, a very good artist, obviously, who really liked color, to, and they explained to him what the movie was about, or maybe he saw some clips, and then he sat down with his paintbrush and he made this poster. And uh, this was a very, very good uh, uh, movie at the time. And it stars some people you probably know, Robert Wagner. And rush enough, Robert Wagner was also a star in um, Sea Hunt. Yep. And uh, the girl, uh, Terry Moore, very attractive girl, got to be there, right? Another chap, I don't know, uh, Gilbert Rowland. And uh, there's the scuba diver. Not a, he's, this is a funny one because it's a diver with no suit on, but he's got a hard hat on, whatever. You know, that's, it was an artist, okay? So apparently artists have this, this special arrangement where they can do whatever in the heck they want, and it's acceptable. And uh, anyway, and he's got his big knife, his 14-inch knife, and he's just in the process of slicing down through the head of the octopus that has got him wrapping his tentacles. Uh, see, so this is a quintessential underwater movie poster. Diver, danger, and a beautiful girl. You can't go wrong. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful poster. And uh, you can see the year down there, 20th Century Fox. Uh, now, if you haven't noticed already, if you're looking, if you haven't noticed, what, what does that say? And down at the bottom, what is that? This is German. That's right. This poster was actually an Amer American movie company, but the movie was sold into Germany as well. Well, countries that spoke German. So this poster is actually has German on it as well. Yeah, the stuff was popular. This is another movie that you may not have seen. It wasn't quite the hit that the Poseidon Adventure was. This is called Beyond the Poseidon Adventure, which is kind of a, another take on the Poseidon Adventure. And it's interesting to me because it involves scuba divers. You can, in fact, you can see a half a dozen scuba divers down here right, right now. The Superliner Poseidon will reveal one last secret, okay? And this had a lot of famous actors in it. There, Michael Caine, you know Michael Caine, Sally Field. I think Sally Field just died, didn't she? No. No? No, she's good. Okay, good. Uh, and Michael Caine, Sally Field, Tali Savalas is gone now, but he was—I love Tali Savalas. He was really, really good, uh, and other folks as well. So this is a pretty neat uh, poster that would have appeared at the time in the movie theaters. Now, just to point out something, I've talked about lobby cards. Well, they had both. You know, it wasn't—it wasn't just the posters. They had posters. But they put usually in front of the theater. So on the street. As people walked by in front of the theater, there'd be big glass cases, and that's where these large posters went. To, so people driving by in their car or horse and buggy or whatever would see the poster. But then as you went in to the lobby, right, they would have lobby cards. So here's an example of a lobby card for the same movie. All right, and you know, a whole bunch of divers in there, and, and uh, I don't know what they're doing. Some divers below. And here's a pretty neat one as well. This is a close-up. And if you guys are uh, U.S. divers, aqualung enthusiasts, you can see this. He's using a good old uh, U.S. divers con shelf. That looks like about a con shelf, uh, 12 or 14 perhaps, and a U.S. divers mask as well. So they had lobby cards and movie posters. Anyway, there you go. There's some more pretty neat, what I think are pretty neat, Underwater movie posters, mostly vintage, and which is anything prior to 1975. You've seen the dates on there. I hope you kind of enjoyed that. And uh, we'll show you some more. I have hundreds more. So I'll make a couple more short sequences if you're into this kind of stuff. I hope you enjoy them. All right. I'm off. Alec Pierce, Scuba Vintage. Talk to you soon.